Hello. Sorry, we were a few minutes late today. We had a bunch of uh, technical difficulties. And if you saw the show last week, you know that I'm coming to you live from a boomer basement in the Midwest. And so we have so much decor, so much uh, random stuff that uh, we have to choose from. So I'm mixing it up every week for a background. Uh, <laughs> enjoy. If you're joining us now, let us know in the chat where you are joining us from, because I love to see all over the world where everybody's coming to us from. And um, let's see, there's Adriana. Hello, hello. So yeah, again, if you're just joining us, sorry, we're a little bit late. Lots of technical difficulties in this snow covered boomer basement in the Midwest. And um, we will just jump in. Uh, Julian Philippe, from Montreal, love it, Florida. I bet you're, I hope you're having better weather than we are. Uh, love it, Beth is coming in from Pennsylvania. Meredith from SoCal, love it, love it, love it. Um, today, if you're, uh, oh, oh, I also want to say, if you're watching either on YouTube or on my personal page, I cannot see any of the chat. So make sure you come over to the Clever Dever Wherever page and join us there. That will also enable you to win today's free giveaway because it's only happening for people that are joining me on the Clever Dever page. And that is, um, look, I'm going to put it up right here. That is how you get over to where all the fun is and the live party. So today we're talking about how to create a travel budget that works. Oh, Sweden. Hello, hello. Netherlands, Sydney, Australia. I love this. I love this. Germany. Hello, Saskia. How fun is this? It's like a big global party. So how to tr create a travel budget that works. And I wanted to talk to you about this um, because I know planning a trip, there's just so many moving parts because you're also researching like where you want to go, how do you find a place you love, all of those things. And then it's also like, what is the budget? So I, years ago, geez, um, whenever Rachel shows up, uh, hey, Jane, um, she can also attest to, I planned a trip, I actually planned a surprise trip. I always think that would be fun. I mean, not for someone to do it for me, but if I planned a surprise trip and they just showed up at the airport and they had no idea where they were going or what they were doing. But I also knew that they needed to have parameters. They needed to have a budget. And so this is when I initially created this spreadsheet that I'm going to share with you today. And so it helped us just kind of figure out, okay, if we have X amount of dollars, We've got to put this much towards airfare or this much towards hotel. And so how do you break that down? And um, I'm going to share it with you. And I am going to give it to everyone who's watching the show, whether it's live or in the replay. I will give you a link to it so that you can use it as well. It may need a few tweaks. So um, that's why I'm not charging during this time because it's kind of involved and super fun. But I want to make sure that you have it too if it's something that you would like or that you would use. Uh, let's see, Vancouver in the house, Fiona, Rachel. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Does anybody ever create a budget? I'm curious if that's even something that you do. So if you if you create a budget, and what, I, what do I mean by that? What I mean is you say, this is how much money I'm going to spend while I travel. And I'm going to give myself some ideas about where to spend it. And so that could be that your budget's $100, your budget's $10,000. There's no judgment, everybody. You do you. But how do you kind of figure out where it goes and then stick to it? So that's what I mean by budget. Do you, if you have, you can just hit the love button. And if you never create a budget, you just show up. You can hit the ha 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 button, which is my favorite button to uh, automata pay. I don't know how you say that uh, conjugation wise. So if you, and also if you want last week's travel notes, which was about how to travel during COVID, make sure that you put in the comments love it in all capital letters love it that's for the how to travel during COVID. if you want today's travel notes along with the link to the budget tool that i use that spreadsheet put notes that's how i'll be able to find you in the in the uh, comments later please know that if you asked for last week's notes during last week's show i haven't forgotten and no, it didn't go to your spam. I haven't sent it yet. Uh, the circumstances that we're currently in have taken more time 
um, away from me being able to do all the travel work. So just know that I am aware and I will be sending it to you very soon, but I have less days to do the work, unfortunately, but it's coming to you. I promise. Um, all the notes, all the notes, loving it, loving it, loving it. And I also want to remind you, for those of you who have been joining us on this Travel Jam every week, you know that I love to give away travel stuff. And today is no exception. So if you want to win, what is it today? It's something totally new and different. It is a travel size, like packable, foldable laundry bag. Super fun, right? So you know what? And I'm going to try something new today, so bear with me. I'm going to try to share my screen. Uh, I have a special platform, and so I, I haven't tried this one yet. So let's see what happens when I do. Hopefully, it won't be totally crazy. Share screen. Uh, start screen share. Oh, exciting stuff, you guys. Let's see if this works. Please tell me that it works. Share. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. See, I'm in the Midwest now. And what I want to show you... Please let this work. Oh my God, it's like a meta, 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 mirror, mirror, mirror. And uh, it's taking a very long time. What the heck is behind it? <laughs> Guys, hold on a second. It's still, seriously? Hold on, hold on. I told you it was gonna be something new today. No, it's gotta work because, oh, okay. Meta, 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 meta. I, I, I'm glad you guys are having fun uh, watching me work new technology. Let's see. Please let it work. Please let it work. <sighs> because I want to show you. There it is. Can you see this? Or did this just open? Can you see? Tell me in the notes if you can see in the comments. So it's a travel bag with a hook. And you can pack it. And then you can shove all your dirty laundry in it until you get to a place where you want to do that. Whether it's a hotel or friend's house or at uh, a local laundromat. So can you guys see that? You see it, yay! Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing for now. <laughs> we'll see how that goes, because I wanna show you some of the other stuff I have up on my screen, because there's some tools that I wanna share. What are these? I want them, yes. Uh, let me stop for a second, and let's see. What? Look at all you guys wanting these things. Shay, it was like Alice in Wonderland, I love that. And I love that you guys are so forgiving, <laughs> because again, it's new technology I'm trying. Um, Beth, did Beth ask? Okay. If Rachel has asked me what's behind, just to catch everyone up, as you may or may not know, I'm trapped in a boomer basement. It's not a hostage situation, but I'm in a boomer basement in the Midwest. And there's so much decor that's been hanging around since, I don't know, the uh, forever. But I'm just bringing random decor that I have found out every week. I'll change it out. It'll be fun. This time, let's see. Apparently, they used to decorate with a telescope and um, a globe I thought was extremely fitting. So that's kind of fun. So that is that. So yes, how do you win? Sorry, how do you win the foldable laundry pack today? Well, you while, we're, while I'm going through some of this uh, information, write the word nugget in the comments and then whatever you heard that resonated with you. So whatever travel tip that I give that's like, aha, put nugget and then the travel tip in the comments. At the end of the show, I'm gonna randomly scroll and pick a winner and you will be the recipient of the very super cool travel laundry bag. It is only US residents, just FYI, unless you're coming on one of my tours with me and then I will just bring it to you. I'll hand it to you. So, <laughs> okay. So if you're just joining, hi, I'm Juliana Dever. I'm an experiential travel expert and I help people find amazing off the beaten path places to travel and have adventures. And um, what are we talking about today? We're talking about how to create and, and stick to a travel budget. Because I know you maybe you think traveling costs a lot of money. It's, it's not always true. It's kind of how you set it up, how you create it, how you track it. And also, I'm going to share some not only some of the tools I use, but some of the things I do to stay within that budget. So let's dig into it. Um, Hold on a second. I just want to make sure the U.S. folks. Uh, Ruth, I found, I, you know what? I will find it and I will put the link in, the sh in these comments later. So if you want to find a foldable travel laundry basket, laundry basket, laundry bag, you will be able to find it. I will get that for you. So 
let's start first with the plan. So that's number one. So wherever you're traveling, whether it's a weekend, a couple hours from yourself or on the other side of the planet, where are you going? And then how much budget do you want to spend? So I don't know how you do it, but like for when I'm planning with my friend Rachel, which a lot of you know at this point, we kind of just pick a number and go, this is how much we're spending. So whether that's $100, $1,000, $10,000, again, no judgment, we pick the number. Now, one item that I found, and I'm not going to show it to you because I thought it would be super easy to share my screen. It's not as easy, so I don't want to spend all this time in tech. But there's a website and it's called budgetyourtrip.com. Now, it's, I would take it as kind of a really soft guideline, but what's cool about it is you can put in the place, the country that you're going to, and then make sure you, you can put in, um, I want to have a, I want it to be cheap or mid range or luxury, and it will adjust and kind of give you the idea of like, oh, this is how much you should expect to spend per day. And this is how much you might want to think about spending for hotels or food. And it's really nice. I would still say, you know, take it as a, just a vague guideline. If that's something that you need, if you don't do the here's how much I can afford to spend route and you just want a guideline. So that is budgetyourtrip.com. The second thing then is now that we know how much we want to spend or how much we can afford to spend is the allocation. Like where do we put this? Like, let's say we have a thousand dollars. Where do we put the thousand dollars? Uh, now I want to show you, um, I want to just make sure I'm not missing any Excellent. Oh, we got the nuggets rolling in. Again, remember, if you want to win the travel laundry bag, nuggets in the comment. If you're watching this on YouTube or my personal profile, come to the business page. That's how you'll win. Put the nuggets in there if you want to win. So now I'm going to try. I'm going to try to share my screen again. We're going to go down the wormhole like Alice in Wonderland. Let's see if it goes any faster this time. Because I do want to show you my spreadsheet. I want to give you a, a bit of an idea of how it works. So, and I can't see your comments at the moment, but I do want to show you how fun this is. <laughs> if you're a geek and you like spreadsheets. And I also want to tell you that it's a work in progress. It was, I created it personally. And um, it's, uh, it's for people who think in spreadsheet and also know how to use Google Docs. If that's not you, this may make you want to run and scream. But if you're like, yes, I love this stuff then this is gonna be a really fun tool for you. So one of the things that I really love is, so in this, this little vacation date, so watch this magic. I hope you guys can see this. Um, let's say I wanna go on August 21st, 2022. Boom. Oh, look, that's 199 days from today. That's how much time I have. And yes, this is in US dollars because that's the currency that I operate in. And this is something that, again, if you're proficient in Google Docs and you want to use this, you can switch to euros, you can switch to whatever your country's home currency is. The thing that I also want to uh, share with you about this. We'll talk about it a little bit in a minute is the currency conversion aspect, but let's just say, okay, again, this is fun. So I'll start over like this is zero and I'm like, okay, I want, I need, I'm going to say $2,000. So don't touch these. They're already set up and you'll see what happens. And so I have $2,000 to spend. Now I'm going to walk you through this a little bit. I think it will be a little bit more. I might even do, you know what? I think I might need to do a loom with this if you are familiar with that technology so that when you receive this, you get the loom. We'll see because I don't want to keep you on here forever, especially since we started late. But let's say this is set up also for two people. So this is generally Rachel and I traveling together. And if I'm saying so for this, I'm going to say, you know what? I think the airfare to Berlin is going to be twelve hundred dollars. But then watch this, I get a really amazing deal and it's only $800. So already I just saved $400. I love that part. So and it'll tell you too, you estimated 1200 and you have 800 and I do, let's see this, that formula should work. And, and if it doesn't, I need to fix it. You know what? Yep. 
this is what happens. It always happens. There's a formula somewhere. That's also wrong, but I'll fix that. <laughs> I'm not going to spend all your time changing my formulas. Um, the second thing I do is lodging. So let's say, oh, you know, Rachel and I sometimes will go, let's spend $100 a night between the two of us. That means we only have $50 to spend per night. So that's great. What I do for lodging, and you can do one of two things. You can put in here $100 a night. So we're going to estimate we're going to spend about $700. And so I don't put it down here because I don't know how many nights I'm going to spend in each place. But let's say $200 a night, $100 a night, $300 a night, or and $100 a night. So now that means we're, and this is, again, for two people, I only have to spend, I only have $350. The fun part comes in is when you get that bill and it's like, oh, look, we got the whole hotel for $150. Well, it was 75, we saved $25 a night. And so you start to see how, when you book it, and then maybe one night you're like, oh, this one was 125 because it was in the city or it was somewhere I wanted to go. So it'll tell you, okay, your difference changed again. So it's it's kind of helps you figure out ahead of time as you're booking it. And I also put this kind of stuff in, like maybe this place, is, you know, I don't know, it's called the... Berliner Hotel, and I booked this directly with them. That kind of helps me figure it out. Okay, then going down to experiences and museums per day. So I'm going to have to fix this to make it work, aren't I? Estimated the total budget. This needs to be. I just got to fix this, you guys. Thank you for bearing with me yet again. I fixed this all before I went live. We know right now that I estimated, I've got estimated 1500 and available I've got a thousand. So groovy, doing awesome. Um, experiences for seven days. Now this depends on like what kind of activities. Oh, am I gonna rent bikes? Am I gonna go to museums? Am I gonna take some walking tours? And that's something again that you decide, is it something you wanna include? Is it something you wanna back off on and just do free activities? This one, I, you know, I'll put up here, I believe, and I, you know what, I have an example and I'm going to keep it so that you can also see that. So we expected to spend about $50 a day. We knew we had some park entrance fees. We knew here, this was when we went to Croatia, that we stayed at a, a theater or we, not, we didn't stay at a theater. We visited a theater and I think we really came under budget, which was amazing. Because when you get to the end and you see how under budget you are, you just get, you just eat more and more expensive food. <laughs> you just go to better restaurants. No, you do what you want or you take it home. But maybe this is something where you're like, okay, I'm going to I'm going to change this. This doesn't affect it, but you put that up there for yourself. We're going to spend $50 a day between the two of us, so that means $25 maybe. And this I kind of put it in for the day. So, museum. And I also want to say, oh, you know, we buy it together. Maybe we get a, like a, not a BOGO, but you know, whatever. And so it was only $12. And so $6 per person. See, and it starts to fill itself in. I know this, um, you may not want to track while you're there. You don't have to. Rachel and I do just because we like to make sure we're staying on track. Um, but if it's something that it doesn't concern you as much, you can at least fill out your estimates so you know this is how much you have for this. This is how much you have for this. Now, the the next one is, and you know, let's see. I would pop over. I don't know. Can I pop over and see how you guys are doing? Oh, see, it messes it all up. Okay, everyone's, I'll, I'll get back to your comments when I switch back. I don't want to throw you back and forth in the screen share because it's crazy. Food and drinks per day. I put this in here if if, if you're this finite. This would make me insane. So I don't do that. What I do is entire trip, depending on where we're going, depend, food to me is everything. So I tend to give myself more. I also think about when you're thinking about your food budget for the day, A, you're going to have um, free breakfast, typically if you are in the type of hotel that offers it. So be cognizant. Did I have free breakfast included in my stay. So then you don't have to account for that. That's one meal that's already taken care of. So you have lunch, you have dinner, but then are you having snacks? Are you having cocktails? Are you eating off street trucks? Are you making reservations? Like just 
think about how much you might eat during the day. For me, it's a lot. Um, so, you know, let's say I want to spend, I mean, I think Rachel on our last one, we did $80 a day and we didn't hit it, which was magic. So look, the estimate now is 350. So you know that's what you're working with. Honestly, here, it's two of us. So let's say we have $700. I would, you know, not get that finite. I've got $700, 350 per person, perfecto. And then as we go along, we like to check and make sure that we check our, you know, our app, our bank app, just to make sure that no one's taken our credit card and spent it anything, but also, and I'll get into the currency conversion, but this is how you kind of, if you're in another country, it helps you with the currency conversion. So this might be that I, I you know, we're like, oh, we ate it. There's Zimmer. Oh, my German friends are laughing. They're like, you can't eat at a room. That's what I just typed in German. But let's say the actual cost of that bill was, came out to $40. So see how this starts to fill in. Um, please, German friends, ignore me. I'm trying to think on the fly with the Der Zimmer part. And then finally, miscellaneous, how much do I need for this? Well, if you've been filling in all of your estimated accounts, what's really cool is this will continue to increase. So right now we've estimated the expenses at uh, 1925. And so we know how much we have to kind of work with. So I'm gonna stop sharing so I can look at your comments and get back to, ah, but, um, so I'm, I'm curious, I'm curious, talk about the importance of splash outs. I will. So I want to know walking through that spreadsheet, if it's confusing, if you find, if you want me to explain it more, not now, but maybe like a walkthrough before I send it to you, or if it makes sense. I think if you work in Google docs or you have a spreadsheet brain, you're like on it, got it. But I just want to know. I want to make sure I'm not leaving you with too much confusion about how I start to break down what I put in. So let me know in the in the uh, chat how that how that was kind of playing out for you. I'm going to go into a couple other tools and maybe that'll also make the picture a little bit clearer. So how do I find lodging to fit the bill? So say in the example that I showed you that you know Rachel and I only wanted to spend a hundred U.S. dollars between the two of us per night. So Okay, Kay says it makes sense. I love it. Um, I, okay, I am going to try to share my screen again and show you the tool that I use. And this is a, an online booking platform that anyone can use, and it's booking.com. And let me go here. So, okay, I want to go to Berlin, um, and I'm going to stay for five days, and there's two of us. And this is a great resource. I sometimes I do book on it, but a lot of times I'll show you what I do. So two adults and when you go here, so like we'll just let it start to filter. It might be extra slow because I'm in the basement, a boomer basement in the Midwest and I'm sharing my screen. Everything is against me. So budget wise, what's great Oh, normally, where's my, normally there's a filter, but let's uh, set your own budget. There it is. Set your own, but hey, hey, remember when I said set it? I'm going to ask it to only show me things that are $100 a night. I also want free cancellation. You know how I feel about that. Let's look for stuff that has a breakfast included. And so now it's thinking. What can I give Juliana that she is going to like? The other thing that I do is then these three dots, best reviewed, lowest price. And it says, oh, hey, look, for five nights, this one's 305. It's a hostel. So you can also say, hey, listen, I want four stars and above. Uh, I want hotels only. And once it gives you that narrowed down version, the next thing that I do, which I don't know how long it would take us, but I also like to hit show on map and make sure that I'm in the neighborhood that I want to be in. Typically, if I'm going to a town in Europe, I like being in the city center, but not always. So, you know, you can, you can even in the filters, tell it what neighborhood you want to be in. 
um, if you really need a sauna, I, I get it, that you can include those in your filters. So once I've identified Titanic, I am totally staying at the Titanic in Berlin. Now I'm going to go to Berlin just to stay at the Titanic. <laughs> so now that I know, what I'm actually going to do is take this information and Google it, find the hotel's direct booking information and see if I can get a price that's even lower. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't, but it still will benefit you and the hotel if you book directly with the hotel. Now, this might be the only booking option for some of the smaller guest houses, and this is the only way you can do it. Whatever your comfort level is, I just want you to know that if you're trying to, as we talked about last week, if you need to cancel something, when you booked in a third party site, sometimes you can have issues. But again, I asked for free cancellation. So I'm covered that way. So that is how I look specifically for lodging that is going to be within my budget. Um, stop muttering darkly about the Midwest. <laughs> hey, I grew up here. I get the license to mutter darkly. Now, the next one is, this is the fourth one, is how to deal with currency conversion. And I know this, this is more just about how to save money, not getting scammed with bank fees. And there's this new ugly customer in town that is out to steal your money. So I want to just talk to that, talk about that for a moment. It's something that I also noticed while I was in Europe all last summer. So I have uh, two ways I want you to deal with currency conversion. It, um, First of all, if you are one that is tracking while you're traveling, just to make sure that no one has grabbed your number, because that is a real thing. In fact, when you go to ATMs, it's oh, I always thought this was ridiculous, but cover the keypad because people have got all kinds of scams worked up and there's like little mirrors or little recorders and they're getting your pin code. I know it sounds paranoid, but it's it's actually a thing. So make sure you cover it. Make sure um, that you're tracking that. And I want the four tips that I want to talk to you about about currency conversion. So, number one, just avoid getting cash in the U.S. before you leave, if you can. I know some people. This is a, as they they just feel better arriving in a country with the local currency. I want you to know ahead of time that what happens is your very own bank, unless you have a special account or you already know, watch out for this because it happened to me. Your bank tax on currency conversion fees of up to 12 to 13 percent. So I went to my bank where I have accounts that should be nice to me. They gave me the receipt and the money that I needed to take with me in euros. They added about 500, 600 US dollars. And I, I, I did the, make sure you do the currency yourself so that you know and what and a really good app for that is called globe convert is it glo I my phone I've got it on the floor somewhere I think it's called globe convert it's a great app because it also includes measurement weight all of these things but every currency around the world double check that against what your bank has given you and that's how I found out I was like whoa and I and I was just signing the the form to get the money and I turned around and left I was like it's not happening so please look out for that. I just want you to be aware of that. The other one is, so how do you get cash local currency? I always do it at the airport if I can. And if I don't need cash, which a lot of places are, are rather cashless, I'll wait until I get into the city and I look for an ATM that is a bank ATM. And this is big because there's a new scam. And if you're not aware of it, it's it looks like a really you're like, oh, look at this lovely ATM that's here to give me my very own money. And if you're not careful, you'll see it's it will have like a 12 to 14 percent currency conversion, which, again, is bonkers. It should be like three, four euro to take your money out. And that's it. So be super careful. I want you to make sure when you get money at an ATM in a foreign country, do it somewhere that's safe. Make sure you cover your pin and make sure you're not paying uh, currency conversions. It should only be just the, the regular standard fee. Another thing, another way to avoid it is if you're in a country that's fairly cashless, you can get by taking out minimal amounts of actual cash and just using your credit card. If your credit card has no foreign transaction fees, and there's so many that don't, uh, I use the United Chase card 
personally because I fly with United and I want the miles, but they also have no foreign transaction fees. So I can use my credit card at restaurants and stores, and I know that I'm not paying that additional percentage over and above that. And one more tip I want to make sure you know is when they bring the little terminal out to you and they ask you if you want to pay in local currency and US dollars, always pick local currency because if not, you pick US dollars and then there that's the currency conversion that goes through the terminal and the terminal can charge you whatever they want. So make sure you're picking the local currency and then the no foreign transaction fees, all of that will come through without bonkers charges. So let's see, one more thing, anything else? Well, oh yeah, the, the RFID cards, Ruth. Yeah, I actually have one of those wallets for my uh, passport because people can also scan, scan the information off your, pan, your, huh, your passport. So let's see, make sure there's so many awesome nuggets. Um, let's see, look at this one. Yep, that's fun. Stana Kate, I, I don't know if that's your real name. Uh, let's see. Hello from Washington state. Hello, Cheryl. Um, yes, have been covering my pin my whole life, <laughs> my whole life. <laughs> you guys, you know, Jordan, you know how I feel about the Titanic. I'm looking for Rachel going crazy about the, uh, the Titanic. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure I'd be Larry of the Titanic. Yeah, I know. Teresa, but Stick with me, you'll see just how cuckoo crazy I am about the Titanic, making sure that I got everybody's questions, lots of uh, fabulous nuggets, I'm loving it. And let's see, let's see, what is this? Please uh, use local currency on the POS if you have a choice. Yes, Debbie, don't forget that. So, and my, fa my fifth tip, once you have your budget worked out, is I just wanted to share a tool that I use when you're traveling with friends it's amazing. It's called Splitwise. It's free. It's a great app to download. We are going on the Titanic too. No, Rachel, we are not going on the Titanic too. Um, and we're also not going down in the diving bell to the Titanic. These are two things that are not happening. Um, but Splitwise, Rachel and I, let's see, I'm going to try once again to share my screen because I just want to show this to you. We do love Splitwise. It's amazing so hopefully you can see my screen oh hey rachel i owe you 25 dollars <laughs> i'm owed nothing so it's a little hard here without um i was really hoping i want to show you and it's very very easy on the app on your phone but you can create a group you know let's say traveling through uh, slovenia I don't know, whatever, you've got to come up with a fun name and then the group type, trip, and then you save it. And it's pretty great because it will have so many different ways for you to add information about your trip. So you can add, like, as you go along, we do it all the time, you can add um, like a little lunch icon and you say, oh, it was $25 for lunch, but I we're going to split it halfway or we're going to split it in thirds. There's like six different ways to do it. And at the very end, it allows you to just tally up what you owe and then split it. And then you can just hit PayPal and then send it. So it's a really good app for when you're traveling with friends. Um, yeah. <laughs> so let's see, we're all caught up. So I just want to remind you again, all the nuggets, if you're seeing them and you're like, why are there so many nuggets in the comments? That's because I'm about to give away a foldable travel laundry bag as, uh, and everyone who's entered that put nugget and then whatever the travel tip was is entered to win. And again, that's only on my business page, not on my, uh, not on the personal page. Sorry. So one more time, what did we talk about today? But you do, if you put nugget, you need to add the travel tip that you've picked with it or the travel tip that resonated with you. And um, you can't just say nugget um, because you could say nugget all day, but I wanna know that you're actually getting something out of this. So what do we talk about today? We talked about the how to create a travel budget and, tra and stick to it and how to track it. And so what are those? We start with a plan and that's where are you going? How much are you spending? And then if you need a 
the kind of an idea. I shared one of the travel platforms that I use. So if you miss that, go back and watch the replay. Second, how to allocate and track your budget. And I shared with you the tool that I created, the spreadsheet that kind of auto tracks it and allows you to put in how much you're going to spend at um, for, for transportation, for lodging, for food, for museums. And I will be giving that away to everyone who puts notes in the comment if you want that information or even just the notes for today. Third, how to find lodging to fit your bill. And one of the tools that I use to do that uh, Fourth, how to deal with currency conversion and how to avoid getting scammed or paying currency conversion fees. And then fifth, the travel tool, my favorite travel tool for using when you're traveling with friends. So lots of goodness today. Don't forget also, if you just wanna come with me on a trip this year, you can do that too. It's already planned for you and the budget's already been set. So boom, you don't have to think about a thing. And uh, now a lot of planning is involved, but it's not overwhelming. It can be fun too, but I'm trying to help kind of take some of that overwhelm away from you. So now let's pick a winner of the super cool foldable travel bag. I'm going to scroll through the nuggets. Nuggets. I wish I had someone here to yell stop, but I can't. And that it was just a fun comment. And the winner is, does it show? Fiona, Splitwise app. So you can stop having to do math in your head. Boom, congratulations, Fiona. I'm gonna send you the laundry travel bag. So that was it. If you have any other questions, please throw them in the comments like right now. If you're watching this on the replay, please also put your qu questions in the comment because I'll come back and I'll answer them. And if you want notes and you're watching it now or if you're watching it in the replay, again, just put notes in the comments. And I think that is it. You have to plan for your wine purchases. Should I make a separate section for that, Jane? <laughs> wine purchases. If you're going to Georgia with me or Slovenia with me, you will be probably tasting so much good wine that you'll wind up buying a bunch. If you're going to Poland, well, vodka, right? So yes, you have to plan for that stuff. Um, <laughs> all right. Amazing, amazing. It was so good to see everybody today. And I will see you next week, next Thursday at noon Pacific time, coming to you live from a boomer basement. Who knows what the decor will be next week? I might have to do like a giveaway based on if you remembered all the different decor that was behind me. It'll be like a, a Where's Waldo or one of those games you played when you were a kid. I don't know. Anyway, thank you again for joining me. I'm Juliana Dever, and I will see you next week. Bye.